Thus, removing a population from a community is not always a good thing. So remember, we do not upset a population in a community. Do not upset means we do not change the figures. Okay? Otherwise, it would affect the whole food web. Now, next, what happens when we add a population of organisms to a community? What can happen if the opposite occurs? Let us take a look at another example. This is Gypsy Moth. It is a true story as well. In 1869, a few Gypsy Moth eggs were brought to North America for the first time from Europe. These silk moths were in demand as they are able to produce better silk. So silk quality was good, so the US brought in this Gypsy Moth because they want to make them reproduce and produce lots of silk for them. And then of course they earn lots of money. But this moth turned out to be poor silk producers and some escaped from where they were housed. So actually, when they bought in all this gypsy moth, they built a farm for it just to keep them, to let them reproduce. But of course, they realized that it wasn't so good after all. So some of them managed to escape out of the farm. It was fenced up, but they escaped out. Now, the moment it escaped, it spells doom. Why did I say that? Take a look. A hundred years later, the moth has spread throughout the northeast of the United States. This was because the moth has no natural predators in North America. Remember, if you have no predators to feed on you, but you have lots of food sources, you will keep eating the rest of the food source and you will keep reproducing, increasing in your population size. The moth add up all the leaves of the tree, leaving no place for birds to build nests. Baby birds and other animals could not be hidden and they were easily spotted and eaten by predators. You see, by introducing uh, an organism, a gypsy moth, actually you, you upset the whole population size of the rest of the organisms. The bird's population decreases rapidly, okay? Now we're coming to a close, but of course we still have a couple more slides. 20, 20 slides have been done. We are down with five. Bear with me. At any point of time, you should just pause the video, go for a break, okay? Now we're going to talk about decomposers. When plants and animals die, they become food for organisms known as decomposers. Bacteria and fungi are decomposers. Decomposers feed on dead matter and animal waste by breaking them down into simpler substances such as mineral salts and carbon dioxide. Most of these simpler substances are returned to the soil and air to be used again by plants. So remember, decomposers refer to your fungi and bacteria. They are really important for helping us to break down dead matter. For example, a dead animal. The weak or the sickly animal died. Now, they are just left there to die. But the decomposers will do the job to break them down into simpler substances and these simpler substances will then be returned back into the soil to allow the plants to receive the nutrients to grow better. So we're just having an example. A dead plant, a dead animal or animal waste will be broken down by fungi and bacteria. And of course, eventually become nutrients for the plants. Now remember, when fungi and bacteria break them down, they actually break them down into three things. Number one, of course, the nutrients, nutrients into the soil. They break them down into water, water back into the soil. They also break them down by producing carbon dioxide to the surrounding where they will be taken in by the plant during photosynthesis. Decomposers play an important role in nature by ensuring that the earth will not be covered by dead matter and animal waste. Imagine this, there is no decomposers. The whole world, dead plants drop, dead animals fell, all of them piling up all over the place. That will be a horrible sight, right now. At the same time, they provide the soil with nutrients for plants to grow. Now, animals that feed on dead animals. Remember, there are animals that feed on dead animals. They are actually, they are not called decomposers. decomposers. They are actually animals that help to speed up the rate of decomposition. They speed up. Why do I say that they speed up? Because when they eat the dead organisms, 
they will increase the exposed surface area of the dead organisms. So when the exposed surface area increases, of course, the rate of decomposition will increase, right? Some animals are not decomposers. Instead, they help decomposers to break down dead organisms to simpler substances more quickly. So meaning, some organisms, they simply eat and chew the dead organisms. When they chew, they increase the exposed surface area. They do this by biting or breaking up dead organisms into smaller pieces. And of course, smaller pieces increase the exposed surface area. So the decomposers like bacteria and fungi will be able to break them down even much faster, right now. Animals that feed on dead plant matter include snails, earthworm, millipedes, termites, and wood lice. Animals that feed on dead animals include vultures, blowflies, and flesh flies. Female flies usually lay their eggs near or in the flesh of dead organisms. Now, what did they do? When they eat the dead organisms, they actually lay eggs on the dead organisms. Why? So that when they lay eggs, their young can be hatched. Their eggs can be hatched and their young will be able to feed on the flesh of those dead animals. So you see, they are trying to reproduce to ensure the continuity of their own kind, okay? When the eggs hatch, the maggots feed on the decaying flesh. Decomposers like bacteria then complete the breakdown of the dead matter. Means bacteria, fungi, helps to speed it up. And then they will help to break them down completely. Right now. And we are done. Finally, we are done. Now remember, always break this video into various parts because uh, you may get tired. So you pause at different junctures, okay? Now, remember, you should also take down notes. Whatever that I say is important, take them down. Your charter book is always there with you right now, okay? And I'll see you very soon with more examples. Now, I'm going to combine a few topics into exam question. So, this will include food chain, food web, will include factors affecting the environment, and of course, the other small parts of the topic about population, population size, community, and so on. Okay, I'll see you in the next teaching video. Okay, bye.